All right, so joining us now, Eric Kane. He is the host of Locked on Vols and the Sports Animal in Knoxville. Uh, that's the, the the flagship station for all the UT uh, sports out there. He also covers UT for, for Rivals. Uh, he's going to break down Jaden Springer for us. Eric, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Yeah, guys, I appreciate you having me on. This guy is one of, the, I think, the more intriguing prospects out there because he has an interesting combination of age – He's very young, uh, still 18, I think. Yeah, he turns um, 19 a couple months before the season begins. So that's like Taylor Horton Tucker uh, territory in terms right. of even, how even young Even THT you are. can kind of call this kid kid. Um, but he was pretty productive in college. And so, but he also wasn't necessarily the frontline starter uh, with Tennessee this year. So when you look at him just sort of broadly, Eric, as a pro prospect, where do you think he is? Well, I think Jaden Springer is a guy that can be a little bit of a project. Um, he's got a lot of ability, as you saw at the NBA uh, Combine. He he can you know jump out of the gym. He's got uh, ex extreme hops. Um, he can he can handle the ball. That's probably not his strong suit, but he can he can drive from elbow down to the blocks and, and seek out contact and stuff like that. The thing that I like about Jaden Springer is, and what I see a lot of uh, NBA guards doing when they drive, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna admit. Uh, pass on just the mid-range jumper uh, he, he will stop and he, he'll work that mid-range an awful lot and it's something that you know he struggled with at times at Tennessee but I think he got better and better as time went on but you know defending he I wouldn't say again that's his strong suit but he's capable of defending a, a couple different positions um you know he can shoot the long ball he, he shot over 43 percent from three-point range at Tennessee and it, it's interesting too because uh, again when he got to Tennessee he didn't start initially but you know Bob outs you know, may, maybe three or four weeks into the season, he was a starter. He started, you know, pretty much every SEC game. And, um, you know, playing for Rick Barnes, it, it's tough. Uh, you're asked to do an awful lot, asked to be very unselfish. And so, you know, he certainly went out there and scored, you know, 25-plus a couple of times. And some games he, you know, set around, you know, 10 points and, and six rebounds. That's the kind of player that uh, Jaden Springer is, and he can, he can bring a lot to the table. Okay, that's really interesting. Just in, in what you got into right there, you mentioned two things that, run pretty counter to a lot of the scouting reports and stuff that I was reading heading into this. First, you mentioned him jumping out of the gym, and a lot of what I've seen has described him as a pretty average athlete by NBA standards. And you also describe defense as not one of his strengths. And all I've been reading is that it is like maybe his best, best strength. Yeah. So I guess with that in mind, is he either – a, a player that can be difficult to get a beat on just because of how young he is or whatever, or is he somebody that you think the national perception of, for whatever reason, has not been correct? Well, I think a lot of it, too, is he was coached by Rick Barnes. And two things about Rick Barnes. Number one, if you don't play defense, you're not going to play. Um, and, and number two, I know he's not a true point guard, but if you're a point guard, Rick Barnes is so tough on his point guards. Those are the two things about, about Rick Barnes. And so no one was playing – good defense last year, you know, according to Rick Barnes. And so maybe some of my evaluation is kind of stemming from everything I've heard in the media sessions from Rick Barnes. I mean, certainly he's not bad. He can he can get out there on the perimeter. He can he can uh, help out in different other spots. And so I, I think that would be one of his strengths. But you know for Rick Barnes it's 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 always got to get better. Always got to get better. And that's why he's one of the better you know developers uh, in the college game, and so um, I, he, he's got good athletic ability. And again, I mentioned the you know the, the vertical jump at the NBA Combine. Of course, I mean that's nice and everything, but that's not everything. But he can go up and get rebounds. He certainly helped Tennessee out on the boards this year. Not as much as uh, a fellow swingman and and Josiah Jordan James, who you know will likely go into the NBA draft next year. But a, a guy that will crash the boards and, and do what he can to help the team out. And um, you know, Tennessee had a lot of deficiencies uh, this season. And Jaden Springer was able to kind of overcome a lot of that and 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 put Tennessee in a position to be competitive in a lot of games and and help Tennessee win a lot of games and certainly a lot of games that Tennessee probably should have won more easily than than not. You mentioned the forty three percent from three point range was obviously a great figure, especially for somebody that young. Um, it wasn't on terribly high volume, but the Lakers are obviously in in need for real need for some outside <laughs> shooting. How well do you think that would translate as a pro, you know, going in at age 19 then into the NBA? Um, and do you actually think that like there's room for him to become like a legitimate uh, three-point threat in the NBA sort of year in, year out? You know, he did, 
three point shooter doesn't is not the first thing that jumps out to me when I think of Jaden Springer. I mean, certainly capable. We, we mentioned the average. A lot of time in Tennessee, it's just shoot it. Just, just go ahead and shoot it. And he he would be timid, and he would he would take the pass, or he would go for that mid range. And so I think a lot of the stress was on him to actually become more and take more of those shots mm-hmm. because again, it was very effective. And Tennessee really wasn't a very good three point shooting team overall so i think certainly if you get into that league and you work with a team like the lakers or you know whoever, whoever he's drafted by um and you work to, to make that more a part of your game and kind of more of what defines you at this level of course you want to be good at everything but if you're really good at one thing you know in, in the nba you're going to stick on a roster because th- there's a need for you so uh, certainly i think if he works he, he can become that thing but there's more there was certainly a lot more to his his game in college uh, than, than just shooting the three-pointer. Uh, in, in terms of his overall offense, what would you say are the best strengths of his in the areas that need to improve more? Well, I think um, he's a good free-throw shooter, and so you'd like to see him you know, seek out more contact and get to the rim a little bit more, um, which, he, which he did at times, and, and that was that was good. Uh, again, three-point shooting was, was, was a strength. He just needs to do a little bit more. May, maybe confidence, and maybe it's because, again, as you guys have mentioned, a guy that was you know in high school the year before, he was a true freshman. It was – it was a COVID year to where you didn't have a normal off season. You didn't need to go to all these camps and stuff. And so um, a lot of it was just new. And so maybe confidence was a little bit, a little bit of a factor in terms of just being more assertive for him. So I think, you know, being more aggressive, being more assertive would be uh, two things he needs to work on. But uh, the strengths, uh, again, I mentioned, it's something that he really, really worked on. And I think that it's something that can get better uh, in the NBA because the, the shots there is, is that mid range. And I mm-hmm. see a lot of people, yeah, I see a lot of people at that league just, you know, stressing the mid range. And I think, Jaden Springer might have even saw that and started trying to incorporate that into his game. And again, it was a little slow to begin with, but I think as time went on, um, it, it certainly got better. He's, he's a really good ball handler. He's not a point guard, not a true point guard, but he can he can handle the ball and bring it down. And uh, he doesn't turn over the basketball an awful lot. He's just a smart basketball player. And I think the more and more he gets reps and the more and more he gets coached, uh, the better he can become. One of the, the the great appeals, I think, of Springer would be his age, Eric. Obviously, you know, and, and the room to grow from there. But the the Lakers really do need somebody who can come in next year and and contribute. They can't afford to have very many dead dead spots on the roster. And I don't mean necessarily, you know, twenty five to thirty minutes a night. That's going to be really hard to do for anybody, any rookie that comes in. Do you think he, though, even at that young age, would be capable of giving a steady, you know? 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes. minutes a night, whatever that might be. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, certainly he works hard. Um, and again, he's he's good enough uh, in in all different areas of the game to just kind of be out there and, and, and learn on the fly a little bit. I think that he's a guy that can come off the bench, you know, play some valuable minutes, give the starters a break. Um, I wouldn't try to you know overwhelm him as a rookie, and I'm sure. Mm-hmm. No, no, no coach. I mean, this is not, you know, a Kate Cunningham coming out. This is Jade Springer, who's a different type of player. I, I think minutes would be, you know, restricted, but certainly I do think to answer your question, he could come in and provide some quality minutes and help you out a little bit. I mean, is he going to come out and, you know, go, you know, play 12 minutes and score 12 points? Not, not every night, but, you know, some nights I think he could. Um, I, acknowledging this is not easy to do you know, during any season that's been, you know, throughout a pandemic, a lot of stuff is remote by Zoom, et cetera. But, were you able to gauge a sense of what Jaden Springer's personality is like just because being a Laker is a very specific thing and you spend a lot of time just in a fishbowl under scrutiny? There, There's just a lot of attention in general for players and, and rookies will be no exception. Yeah, a lot of the stuff we did was over Zoom and that's unfortunate because you don't um, get to truly feel like you, you get to know, especially with him too, he and Keon Johnson just – kind of ones and dones and so it's a little unfortunate but um but you know it's a guy that you know transferred to uh img academy and and played some really really good basketball it's a great program travels all over the country plays you know before covid plays in front of packed arenas and stuff like that goes into great tournaments um he's played on a great aau circuit so this is a guy that's that's been around great competition and been around you know kind of when the stakes are high and so ultimately nothing's going to be like you know, what he's doing next season, of course. But um, I, I do think that, you know, his personality is a guy that won't back down and is very coachable and a guy that wants to learn, a guy that's been there a little bit, but knows he's got a long way to go. And so uh, that's the type of player I think Jaden Springer is. And also, too, I mean, if you're part of the, you know, the IMG world, you're prepped for they prep you stuff. for that. Yeah, yeah that's like, part that, of the that's, program. I mean, it's like a finishing school in a lot of ways, but for basketball. 
Like I, and I don't, I don't say that uh, detrimentally. I'm just saying that it's the mm-hmm. truth. You are being prepared for a life in basketball, and part of that is dealing with media, dealing with all the scrutiny that comes with being a professional athlete. Yeah, yeah. Same with basketball. Same with football. IMG does it with, with both both of those sports, and it, it carries a lot of weight when you go to when you go to that academy, IMG, because of reasons you just mentioned. You, you, they're going to play in the best tournaments. They're going to you're going to be hounded by reporters like myself calling about recruiting and stuff like that. And they coach you up on how to answer things and, and how to go about uh, this type of stuff more so than, you know, you get that type of training when you go to college and, and all that. But if you're getting this training before, and I don't think it was from the get go that it was absolutely, he was going to come in and be a one and done, but I think it was always more so he was than than he was, and he was never going to be a guaranteed lottery pick. You know, Keon Johnson, uh, another player, has kind of been his realm was like, okay, he's probably going to be a lottery pick. He's going to be right on that line. You know, Jaden Springer was this guy looks like he could be a first round pick, and if he comes out and has a good, has a good uh, you know freshman campaign, he's likely going to be gone. And so, um, yeah, I think he might have had that mindset the entire time and trying to get as much out of Rick Barnes as, as he possibly can. And uh, again, I mentioned the development with. Barnes in this program, a, a lot of it you see the the rewards, you know, coming in years down the line. Of course, you know, Jaden Springer didn't have that, so I think that he just tried to soak up as much as he could while he was there. And so, but mm-hmm. I, I do think that it was very important that the training and, and the coaching that he got at IMG Academy was kind of looking years and years in advance and has prepared him for this moment. My last thing for you, Eric, is you know in the SEC you've had a chance to kind of see some of these guys go through when they play Tennessee, and obviously a lot of one and dones and a weird season. I don't expect you necessarily to have like super deep insight, but when you see, you know, when you saw him Springer play, you know, Trey Mann at Florida or um, uh, you know Cam Thomas and guys like that, how did he look relative to those guys? You know, did he fit in more polished, less polished? Yeah, you know, what was your evaluation there? You know, I always thought that he he held his own and he looked, you know, every bit as gifted, every bit as athletic, every bit as um, as skilled as those guys. Some of these games, you know, it was such a weird year for Tennessee because you know, Tennessee had so much talent and the expectations were were, were through the roof. Um, and, and the team just never, you know, whether it be COVID, whether it be injuries, whatever the case may be, the team just never gelled and came together and played as one. So a lot of these games, I mean, Florida, you know, beat the brakes off Tennessee in one of these games. Um, you know, t- Tennessee was, was well behind in a lot of these other games. And so at that time, it's not like he ever came out and was the, was a full blown leader and was rallying the troops or anything, but it's not like he looks scared either. It's just kind of, mm-hmm. kind of just going through the motions that that makes sense. So, but there were games, um, you know, and those are tremendous players you brought up. And I, I think that, you know, Jaden Springer looked, you know, every bit as as good as those guys in these games. But there were games to where Jaden Springer said, "Okay, you know, the, the offense has got to come from me today. It's not going to come from everybody else." And he would step up and and he was ready to roll. Awesome, uh, Eric. Can you hear him? He's the host on of Locked On Vols here on the network. You can also uh, get him in Knoxville on the Sports Animal, the official, uh, you know, the the the. Uh, Flagship. That was what I was the word I was trying to the radio word I was searching for uh, for UT Sports. Uh, he also covers the Vols for Rivals. Thanks so much, man, for doing this. We really appreciate the insight. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Anytime.